It's Friday, November 4th. Let's talk PlayStation. Firmware updates for PlayStation 3 and Vita, actually, which is awesome. Haven't had those in a long time. Uh, uh, 4.81 for PS3, 3.63 for Vita this past week hit. And yes, they improved the quality of system performance. Good stuff. All right, but really, uh, Uncharted movie news, again, two weeks in a row. Who would have thought that's absolutely unheard of that we have more news about this? Uh, so this past week, it was revealed that the director, Sean Levy, is actually already approaching certain actors about the certain, certain roles that they want to do. Um, he feels confident in the, um, the writing. He says, uh, we, we kind of found an, an exciting uh, tone for Uncharted, and we're, we're very pleased with the direction we're going in right now. So, mm, you know, a director saying positive things about the movie that he's going to be directing. Not really a big surprise. Uh, I am still cautiously pessimistic about the movie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we'll hear more about it when some more details come out. All right, let's talk numbers. We got some Sony financials to discuss. Second quarter for 2016, Sony financials are out. Uh, Sony revealed that they shipped 47.6 million PlayStation 4s. Uh, that's the most current number up to September. Keep in mind, this is units shipped, so these units aren't necessarily sold. Uh, I don't know why people sometimes get really antsy about the difference. Uh, at some point, those units are gonna get sold, let's face it. Um, especially since we're gonna be going into the holiday season, so Sony's gonna be selling much more than 47.6 million, more than likely. And of course, obviously with the imminent release of PS4 Pro. But still good numbers. Uh, Sony's looking pretty good. I'm sure they're pretty happy with that. This is actually 100,000 units down from year over year, but kind of a small negligible number. I'm sure 100,000 sounds like a lot, but still shit little PlayStation 4 is being sold. Um, there was also an interview or some sort of discussion that EA's uh, Blake Jorgensen was having about, you know, sort of what EA's analyzing for their projected sales of, you know, PS4 and X1, up, you know, down the line. They're saying, like, by 2020, they expect PlayStation 4 to have around an install, install base of, like, uh, 100 million units, which is, you know, quite high. <laughs> PlayStation 1 is uh, a little over 100 million. PS3 didn't quite hit that, a little over, like, 82 or 83 million. I have to look up the number exactly. Um, PlayStation 2, of course, obviously the highest sold system worldwide um, of all time at 156 million, something like that, 157 million. Um, 100 million PS4s would definitely be a, a very proud number for Sony. I think they'd be extremely happy with that. So if you didn't already realize this, but uh, next week, PlayStation 4 Pro is out. Uh, so Sony actually just revealed uh, an updated list of all the updated, of all the titles that are going to support PS4 Pro features at launch. So real quick, let's go over every single title. On launch for PS4 Pro, these games are going to be supported. Bound, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, Dishonored 2, Drive Club VR, EA Sports FIFA 17, Firewatch, Helldivers, Hitman, Hustle Kings, Infamous, Sec uh, Infamous First Light, Infamous Second Son, Knack, Mafia 3, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, NBA 2K17, Paragon, PlayStation VR Worlds, Ratchet and Clank, Res Infinite, Rigs, uh, Mechanized Combat League, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Robinson, The Journey, Smite, Super Stardust Ultra, The Elder Scrolls Online Gold Edition, The Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel Unlimited, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition, The Last of Us Remastered, The Last of Us Left Behind, The Player in VR, Titanfall 2, Uncharted 4, Thieves End, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, Viking Squad, World of Tanks, XCOM 2. And so he's also mentioning, of course, um, by the end of the year, there are going to be a few more titles that will clearly, you know, be supported, titles that are yet to be released. I mean, this is, I, you know, what's funny, this isn't actually, like, confirmed, I guess. This was actually dating all the way back to... Um, early rumors about PS4 Pro, and this is back when it was called Neo, and so he, like, never, like, formally announced the thing. But there was that, you know, rumor about, like, that slideshow of, like, of, like, Sony documents that kind of details what, you know, your, the requirements are for developing on PS4 Pro, and we kind of, like, discussed that. And one of the requirements, requirements was October, like, late October or something, some specific date, and moving on forward, every game has to support PS4 Pro. I don't remember Sony actually ever confirming this as recently, but, um, because the past few episodes I've been kind of saying it as fact, but I don't actually remember them actually saying for sure this is it moving forward. They just keep giving sort of an updated list, which is odd to me, because I think moving forward, every single new title, you know, a developer should be required to and support it in, in some way, shape, or form. Anyway, let's talk about PlayStation VR real quick. Sony talked for the first time about sales on PlayStation VR, and they more or less said sales are on track. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, I think that's a very... I, like, it's probably the, the approach we all expected. So I'm going to say once they finally were to talk about PlayStation VR's numbers, they, they, they're more or less saying they're exactly what, what they thought they were going to be. And if we backtrack to a couple comments that Sony mentioned about PlayStation VR, they said, 
Um, you know, within the first few weeks of launch and at launch, they expect it to sell around 100,000, you know, hundreds of thousands of units, which basically means under a million, but hundreds of thousands, which is uh, uh, between, you know, 100,000 to 900,000, they're clearly expecting less than a million. Um, and there's obviously the number of times where we were talking about how analyst firms were kind of saying, you know, by the end of the year, they'd sell like over a million, like close to 1.2 or 1.3 or something. And uh, I'm sure Sony would be extremely happy with that. But yeah, they're staying on track. I think they're staying pretty conservative about it. I think they understand that it wasn't going to be some, you know, huge, huge launch. It was going to be slightly soft, but there was going to be some decent numbers there. And it's just going to be hard to sort of gauge the you know, sales numbers of virtual reality because they really don't have a place yet. So I guess the last news story I want to talk about with you guys was actually a number of pieces that came out this past week regarding certain titles and how they're going to be supporting PS4 Pro. And the interesting point about how it's kind of setting a new precipice for, you know, games moving forward. In, like, in terms of like, it's it's we're getting to, into a place now where there's a lot more player choice as to how they want to present the games to themselves. So um, basically, uh, a lot of PS4 Pro titles are taking the approach of how you can either set higher frame rates or higher resolution. So, for example, Neo on PS4, when that game um, uh, is on PS4 Pro, you basically can, a can either set it to 2160p with 30 frames per second, or you can lower the frame rate and get 60 frames per second. And they even also offered these modes on the original PS4 version of the game, too. So if you're going to be playing out on a regular PS4, you can also do the same sort of situation. Um, 1080p, 30 frames, but it will focus you know, on delivering that high quality resolution or you can lower the resolution bump up the frame rate and keep a solid 60 um, and I think there's another mode where the frame rate's unlocked um, The Last of Us Remastered actually also did this too where you could unlock and unlock the frame rate Infamous Second Son I believe also had this and um, I think Killzone Shadowfall that was just unlocking and locking frame rate though now we're getting situations where full on you can change frame rate or resolution um, uh, the Witness, when The Witness gets a PS4 Pro patch, I believe it's doing the ex more or less the exact same thing. And you can even toggle, like, anti-aliasing, too. You can either have higher anti-aliasing, uh, or you can, you know, lower that. You, you can knock that and lower the resolution and get a solid 60. Um, but this is, what's even more interesting is, and I'm totally going to throw it out there, but because people still never fucking understand this about consoles. They're closed boxes. It was always the conversation of, oh, PS4 and X1 are underpowered. And, it's, and I always said, well, not necessarily. They're still definitely good quality machines. The reason why there's the, the you know, frame rate's still 30, or the reason why games aren't hitting 1080p, is because developers are fucking stubborn, and they push graphics to the absolute max. That's what they want to do, and, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, PS4 or X1 not hitting 1080p 60 frames, they can certainly do that. The developer chooses not to every single time they make games. They just say, oh, well, we just want to make the game even better looking. Well, screw it. We'll, we'll lower the resolution. We'll go with 30 frames per second. They've been doing this for fucking ever. And now that we have sort of modern consoles and, you know, PC gaming obviously on the rise, it's birthed this com ridiculous conversation about how consoles are constantly underpowered. Yes, in the, in the grand scheme of things, they're obviously underpowered. They're closed affordable boxes. But... The case is to be made that they're still capable mach capable machines and they can do the things you want them to do, but when developers make games, they're going to make it in a certain way and there's really no other choice you have. But that's the good thing, I guess, moving forward, is that we're kind of moving it into a new direction where developers are giving you that sort of tool set, much like when you're gaming on PC, and it's, you know, you get, it's very highly dependent on the rig that you have, and that's where you can, so, you know, sort of toggle certain settings and kind of align the game to how you want and how you want it to perform based on the amount of performance your personal computer has. Consoles, obviously, they're, you know, everybody's going to have the same PlayStation 4, everybody's going to have the same PlayStation 4 Pro, um, but now they're actually giving you those options, so if you do want a higher frame rate, Boom, take that box, you got a higher frame right now. Um, if you want super, super high resolution, go ahead and tick that box, now you've got it. Um, you've got the higher anti-aliasing, you got a crystal clear, you know, perfect picture, but if you're that guy that really does care about that frame rate, and this is of course assuming the developer offers this option, because it's still very much so a title by title basis. Um, but that's the good thing, I guess. We're moving in sort of a direction where that's becoming a reality. And I've seen a few people actually say that they don't like this because they're turning into PCs. Um, and I find that 
that comment sort of absolutely fucking ridiculous. These are just options and these are just there's literally just toggle menus in the options. The consoles are still closed boxes. They're still easy boxes. You buy one time, you plug into a TV, and they're gonna work all the time. But now when you start a game, in the options menu, you can change it visually just a little bit. People are actually like upset about this just because it's slightly similar to PC in that regard. Calm down. This is actually kind of a good thing. But I guess it kind of goes into the conversation of how gamers like to bitch and complain and complain about everything. Um, but I think it's actually pretty awesome because that's kind of like what I've always thought would be sort of a, a, a nice way to please everybody. And especially nowadays where, where we do have this constant conversation of more power, more graphics, more resolution, more frame rate, um, getting the, the absolute best and the absolute max out of games and picture quality like that's what like a lot of people always demand nowadays and that's fine that's why sony and microsoft felt the need to offer a mid-cycle update and that's why a lot of developers feel the need to um start adding sort of these some of these settings in their games and kind of give you guys the sort of preference play style of how you want to approach your games from now on anyway those are some of the news stories i want to talk about with you guys this week uh so there was no wednesday video and i blame skyrim for that sorry i was playing the hell out of that game I really like it. <laughs> I really should have played it back in 2011, but I think at the time there was like just other stuff I was playing and I was just like, just skipped it. I'm glad I got it on PS4 though, so I'm really enjoying it. Uh, but here's the big thing. This is the last LTPS until we have PS4 Pro. So next Thursday, um, we are going to be doing some PS4 Pro stuff. We'll, um, I don't know, we'll probably just do the uh, like an unboxing video. Maybe one or two days later, we'll do a nice little size comparison or something. Well, actually, the hard well, I'll do the hard drive change video, probably same day. Maybe a video about how to transfer your um, content over and the multiple ways that you can do that, because uh, I know people like to see that stuff. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for PlayStation Four stuff, PlayStation Four Pro stuff. Excuse me, very professional. We got to be. Got to keep keep that in mind. Professionalism is uh, very important. And keep submitting Ryan on gaming topics for when I finally decide to start filming more of those. Anyway, that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Bedecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I'll see you guys next Friday.